Paper of the Year Award for the International Conference of Computer Vision in South Korea was awarded to SINGAN, learning a generative model from a single natural image. In this video, we're going to go through what this means, what it means to learn a generative model from a single natural image, what the applications of this are, and then we're going to go through the details of the model architecture and the miscellaneous heuristics and tricks presented in the paper to make this work. We'll start describing the SINGAN model by showing what it's able to do. So starting from images like this mountain image or this bird image, the SINGAN is able to create new images that resemble the original image. So sort of like a style transfer kind of algorithm, but it's not really style. It's sort of like generating a new image with the same kind of semantic structure. So you see how in this original mountain image, we have this generated image that has put this mountain in the middle uh, different, differently from the original image. And then with the birds, we see how it permutes the uh, bird ordering in like the flock and the air. And, it's preserving these semantic structures of having the trees underneath the birds and things like this. So we can see more examples of this with the uh, hot air balloons, the uh, pyramids, and the Colosseum, and how the uh, SINGAN model is able to construct new images just from a single training image. So some interesting applications of this are paint-to-image, editing, harmonization, super resolution, and animation. So paint-to-image is this idea of having some kind of rough sketch that captures the uh, like global structure of the image you want to generate, and then you do this semantic style transfer, sort of similar to NVIDIA's Gauguin model, in order to uh, go from the painted image to a photorealistic or you know some image that resembles the training image that this model was trained on. So editing is this idea of you know modifying different characteristics in the image, then having it come out to be uh, globally coherent uh, with the SINGAN algorithm. Harmonization is this idea of placing an object into the image and then trying to have it uh, smoothly integrated within the rest of the image. So you see how sort of this placed in Christmas tree is refined to be more globally consistent with the original image. Super resolution is this idea of say taking a 128 by 128 image and then uh, sam upsampling it to say uh, 512 by 512 while preserving the semantics of the image. And then animation is a really cool application of this where uh, say you have you start with an original image and then you uh, perturb the image such that it generates a plausible animation. So some other cool things are you see this uh, input paint and the differences between uh, traditional algorithms like neural style transfer and contextual transfer compared to SINGAN. So in this case you have the training sample of the pyramids, you draw a new pyramid orientation, and then SINGAN is able to construct this new image for you. And somewhere where you have this pasture of cows, and then you sketch new places to put the cows, and SINGAN is able to render this image. SINGAN also works really well for image editing applications. This example shows how you take this original training example that the SINGAN is trained on, and then you uh, crop out patches and move them around the image, and the SINGAN learns to refine the image such as the uh, move patches make sense, and you see how it does this in a much smoother way compared to the previous content-aware move algorithm. Uh, also, you see the harmonization results, uh, placing this dolphin into the image, into this image, and then seeing how the uh, SINGAN is able to blend the dolphins into the image, compared to the previous deep paint harmonization algorithm. SINGAN can also be used for single image animation. And you can check out this video, which I'll link to in the description of this video, where you see the uh, process of animating images by starting with a single source image and then just perturbing it so you have these kinds of animations. So it's probably best shown in examples like uh, the fire, or the, the strong wind on the, uh, on the bush image, and things like the uh, lightning image and then how you can animate the lightning by perturbing the image by using this uh, SINGAN model and then things like the fire probably comes out as the best example of this. Now we'll look at the technical details of the SINGAN architecture that make this work. So this model architecture takes a multi-scale progressively growing architecture similar to generative adversarial network models like progressively growing of GANs, uh, the LAP GAN, Laplacian pyramid of GANs, and the style GAN model from NVIDIA. So the idea here is that the generator starts off with a low resolution uh, image to be generated and it's compared against the original image that has been downsampled to the same resolution. So for example, the generator starts off with this say 4x4 four four, uh, grid of randomly sampled Gaussian noise and then it learns to map it into an image and the discriminator is comparing this mapped image at this low resolution scale, say 4x4, four four, to the original image downsampled to say 4x4. Four four. So this is an interesting discriminator model in that it's not looking at the entire image. Rather they use this thing called a patch discriminator, a Markovian discriminator, which is just looking at patches of the image to make its real or fake classification rather than looking at the entire image all at once. So also interestingly in the generator architecture is as it goes up from 4x4 to say 8x8, it's doing this by doing something called residual learning. So similar to architectures like the ResNet, what it's doing is it's taking the previously generated image and it's propagating it ahead such that it's just mapping the uh, Gaussian noise into a new image that's going to be added with the upsampled previously generated image 
in order to make the next scale uh, generated image. And then again, the discriminator is gonna be looking at the downsampled original image at eight by eight, and it's gonna be sliding this patch over it to make classifications of the patches rather than looking at the entire image. So next we'll get into the uh, what is meant by the patch discriminator, the Markovian discriminator, and what is meant by how this effective patch size is uh, it, uh, it's getting lower as you go up into the higher scales and then we'll look at further into this uh, residual learning in the generator and the loss function used. From the SYNGAN paper are references to learn more about the Markovian patch GAN discriminator. I recommend checking out the pix to pix paper's description of it. So you come here to section uh, 3.2.2 is where they describe the patch GAN. So basically what it is is it's sliding these n by n patches over the image and then it's uh, computing the real or fake on each of the patches and then it's aggregating these uh, predictions in order to make its prediction for the image. So also interestingly in the SYNGAN architecture is that they don't use uh, a cross entropy loss on these uh, predicted patches for the discriminator, rather they use the uh, Wasserstein GAN, uh, GP, the gradient penalty to improve the Wasserstein GAN. So basically it's just a technique for uh, computing a single metric and then uh, judging it based on this metric and having the gradient penalty enforce this thing called Lipschitz, uh, Lipschitz constant or constraint in order to make this stable compared to using cross entropy on the discriminator. Residual learning in multi-scale generation is a really interesting uh, idea in this paper that I haven't really seen used anywhere else. I'm not sure if the progressively GAN, uh, growing of GAN model actually uses this. I'm pretty sure it just takes the image generated at the previous step as input to uh, learn the next resolution scale. So. In this example, say we have our 4x4 generated image, we're going to upsample this by using maybe something like a nearest neighbor interpolation to have our 8x8 image of the previously generated 4x4 image, and then we're going to combine this with an 8x8 uh, Gaussian noise uh, input, and then we're going to put uh, the combination of these two by doing an element-wise addition through five convolutional layers, and then we're going to re-add the original uh, upsampled image to form the final output. So this form of having the uh, previous layers, features, or output in this case concatenated ahead with the features from the next layer is this idea of residual learning and uh, ResNet, which is probably the most popular architecture in computer vision. This is the loss function used to train the SYNGAN model. We have our adversarial loss for the generator and then the patch discriminator, the Markovian discriminator, and then we also have this reconstruction loss term that I thought was kind of interesting and I also didn't completely understand how it's used, especially with the weighting of this alpha parameter. So the idea presented in the paper is that they have this reconstruction loss in order to make it so the generator can still reconstruct the training image even given this uh, multi-scale upsampling process. So the idea is that you start off the generation with this Z star or Z prime that is like the optimal uh, noise map for generating the original image and then in the future in the later scales of upsampling you just have all zeros in the input noise as you're doing the uh, progressive upsampling and mapping from the generator. And then they have this uh, you know absolute uh, the root mean squared error in order to compute the distance between the uh, generated image starting off from Z star and then the original image. This reconstruction loss is described in section 2.2 of the paper in their reconstruction loss uh, section of the paper. So they also describe this technique is able to give them insight into how to structure the uh, spatial noise uh, layers at each uh, upsampling layer. And by doing the standard deviation and how it's proportional with the error term that they're using here in the reconstruction. So if you have any more insight into this, please share it in the comments. One of the most interesting characteristics of generative adversarial networks and generative models is what kind of a control do we have as the user over the generated images and the generated output. So this case is showing you how you can control the variability in the generated output by controlling which scale on the multi-scale hierarchy you are choosing to vary the image at. So say starting from N, which might be all the way at the bottom, you get an image with more variability. You see how this stripe in the middle of the zebra doesn't really make any sense. But then as you say, take an image and then insert it into this scale. So Say we start off with an image that's been generated by the model or some random image like a painted image that we want to generate into an image resembling the training image. What level we originally downsample it to, say 16 by 16 compared to 8 by 8 or 4 by 4, is going to, uh, is going to determine the variability in the output that we receive. The SYNGAN uses a multi-scale architecture that starts from some predefined scale. So say we start with a 256 by 256 image, we can decide to either scale it down to 4 by 4 or 8 by 8, and then we can also control the ratio at which, at which we're upsampling the image at each step. So say going from 4 by 4 to 8 by 8 to 16 by 16, following that squared factor, or we could go from say 4 by 4 to 16 by 16, 64 by 64 in this kind of way. So this image shows the effect of the number of scales used for the upsampling. So you see as you use more scales, in this case from this training image up to eight scales, you get a much more coherent image compared to just using two scales. 
The authors of Syngan report the qualitative value of the Syngan model by using a user perception study with Mechanical Turk, which is a platform for uh, having humans label data, and it's especially popular in things like generative adversarial networks, generative models, where humans judge the uh, realness or fakeness of the generated images. So the two factors of variability here are the diversity in the samples, which is determined by, as we showed previously, the uh, level at which the uh, images started to be generated from, with n having more diversity and n minus 1 having less. So also the difference between paired and unpaired. Paired is where the uh, user is given a real image and a generated image and then is determining which is which, and unpaired is where you just see one at a time and are classifying it as real or fake. And also kind of interestingly, you can see how this changes the, uh, you know, the confusion by quite a bit. So you see in the unpaired case, in the uh, less diversity, the users really can't tell the difference between the uh, SYNGAN generated uh, images and the original training uh, instance. The SYNGAN model awarded the best paper award at the ICCV conference has a lot of cool implications and uh, utility for computer vision and miscellaneous applications. So one such application are all of these, you know, paint to image, editing, harmonization, and also the animation, which I think has been relatively unexplored in uh, generative adversarial network literature and generative models in general. So I think also the SYNGAN model could be really interesting for data augmentation, for taking the existing training samples and augmenting them. I've seen some people have commented that they're interested in seeing what this would look like on medical images. It's definitely a really interesting model, and I definitely think that there isn't anything like this out there. Thanks for watching this explanation of SYNGAN, the ICCV 2019 Paper of the Year, learning a generative model from a single natural image. Hopefully this paper uh, provided a good explanation. If you have any additional comments or insight that you'd like to share, please leave it in the comments, and please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos.